Hey guys, Paul of Pro Scout Models, welcome to the build series. Today we're going to be starting Ravel's 125th 69 Camaro SS427 Baldwin Motion. So yes, this was a part of, uh, let me get this right, I think it was the American group build. Yes, it was the American group build and a buddy build between myself and basically Andrew Dewey. A few other people are going to join in. I've not seen anything from them yet, so maybe we'll in the future. I don't know. But me and Andrew both finished ours, um, and this is my build of mine here today. I did have an original color choice, which I had in mind all the way along, and I changed it, as you'll see very shortly. So, yes, we went in a different direction, and I'll be honest, I'm glad. I did so multitude of beautiful pro scale paints products which you can find in the link down below uh, and as always you want to get early access on all these videos and they are ad free videos over on my patreon uh, you can get 10% off of pro scale paints get up to two to three month early access there's exclusive content on there there's a Sunday bench update every week there's a Facebook messenger chat group a Facebook group loads of perks being a supporter and you help keep, keep me being able to make these videos Become a supporter down below. There's all different tiers and levels. You can join, stop whenever you want. Um, and yeah, come on over and have a look. You never know, you might find something you like. And also down below, there's links to everything else associated with myself, social media wise, and all the products I use in these videos. So let's jump straight in and get started with the build. Right then, we're going to start the build by filling in the bonnet pinholes that are in the, uh, the hood or bonnet. So Revel has very kindly molded these in place. Uh, we don't want them. <clears throat> so we're going to infill them with some of the Tamiya two-part epoxy resin. So you basically pull off two equal parts, mix them together, put them in place, let it dry for six to eight hours, sand away, job done. Now, never had much luck with putties before. They always shrink and reply, require multiple applications. This one, though, yeah, bit of a game changer. Recommended a bit to me by a friend um and definitely a game changer well worth trying this stuff um now what i would say is however much you think you need to mix mix about a tenth of it because you're wasted but this is the stuff the quick type in the green packet uh, as you can see we've popped it in place put more on than we need and then using some ump sanders we're going to sand it back now it sands really easily absolutely brilliant stuff very little to none no shrinkage whatsoever on this um uh, i used it on the wide body mustang and no qualms in continuing to use this normally use super glue ca glue but it's a bit of a pig super glue because you can't really see where you're sanding whereas this would be in like a yellow color it's fairly obvious where it is and it sands a lot easier than ca glue so another highly recommended product a new product to me uh, like i say always skeptical of uh, putties but this one definitely does what it says now over the rest of the car we've got a seam line running all the way across the back of the boot lid all the way down the rear volance all the way up the side to the windows and then across the front wings and down the front so using a variety of UMP sanding sponges and thinning sticks we're going to spend a good hour here just gently sanding it away now good time to do this is either while you're chatting with people i'm often in a zoom call off a zoom call just chatting away with friends modeling or put some music on or a podcast or your favorite youtube and just do this while you're mindlessly watching that. It's a very boring, laborious job, but the better your job you do now, um, the better your paintwork will look because you don't want any of these seam lines ghosting back in, which can happen if they're not removed properly. And also, you don't want to spot one later on. And I would also recommend a guy coat of primer to ensure you got rid of everything. Once you're happy, all the seam lines are gone. We're going to key all the surface with a Tamiya 2000 grit sponge, which basically we're going all over the plastic body. I'm putting thousands of micro abrasions in there. Uh, this is the two things that remove any surface imperfections. Um, and also, like I say, puts micro, uh, micro abrasions in the plastic, which allows our primer and paint to adhere better to the surface. So it's a standard prep that a full size car body shop will do. And I think it's an important um, part of body prep on a model. The Tamiya sponges um, are ideal for this. And we will have some 3M. Sander sponges in stock very soon at Pro Scale. So you can come over to us and get some from us as well. Now, the rear spoiler, a bit of a pig, this rear spoiler, three mounting points. 
um, and a sink mark shown for each one on the top. I managed to sand two out, two need to fill in a little bit, so just bear that in mind if you're building the kit. So the body's all prepped, I'm just checking that the bonnet fits properly, and it does, fits absolutely perfectly. Very cool. Like I say, this is my take on this car, and I'm going to change a few things. We're not going to do it in the uh, colour intended. Um, we're going to remove some bits, we're going to do different stripes, and yeah, just a few different things. And while I'm here, I'm going to smooth the sides off, get rid of the side marker lights. Um, so again, a couple of minutes with a UMP sander, and then the Tamiya sponge, just to smooth these out. Just wanted a nice, clean look on the side of the car. Like I say, it's my model, I'm doing my different take on it. There may be some aspects of my build you won't like, but at the end of the day, we all build for ourselves. And as you can see, UMP sanders, Tamiya sponge, removing those lickety split. And same on the front, all four of them, two front, two rear, just a bit of light sanding to remove them. Very easily taken off. Just be careful you don't reshape or reprofile any areas. You shouldn't be sanding like the wheel arches or that bumper crease at the bottom there. And just take your time. Like I say, this is a bit of a boring part of the modeling, but perfect preparation prevents piss poor performance. It's a very important step. Every step we take here on our way to paint will just improve our paint finish tenfold. So it's time well spent. As for the parts, we've got all the parts here that now need painting before 2K. So we've got the body, we've got the bonnet, we've got the rear spoiler, we've got the wing mirrors, and the rear volants. Now on the first model I built, if you remember I did it in GX Clear Red, I put that rear volants in place and had an absolute nightmare getting the body on. So on this one we've left it separate, and I'm glad I did because it was very tight. So we've mounted all the parts on the Tamiya stand. We've got some Pro Scale Paint pre paint degreaser. This is an alcohol-based degreaser, and this will remove any nasties or surface contaminants from mold release which you don't really get anymore nowadays but more so from yourself from your fingerprints we've been eating chips or crisps or you know having cans of coke and getting greasy sugary fingerprints all over the body this is another vital important step this will give us the perfect surface for our primer and again a step well worth taking so highly recommend our pre-paint degree so there's other things you can use out there but of course I'm going to recommend ours. So all over the body, and then dry it off with a nice clean piece of kitchen paper. As you can see, we've got the body secured to the stand with some masking tape. All the other parts are held on uh, with either double-sided tape on a bottle, or we've drilled into the spoiler support and put a cocktail stick in. Or on the in the case of the wing mirrors, we put some shea glue on the end of the cotton uh, the cocktail stick and just glued it in place in an area where we can remove it without any damage, but this is a vital stage. So many paint problems can be caused by contaminants on the surface. So it's a time, it's a, a, a moment well worth taking to do this. So we've put, mounted the bonnet or hood, if you're American or Canadian, uh, on an old bottle with some three and double sided tape. Uh, and like I say, we're just gonna go around and clean it up. Now, like I say, first coat of primer is gonna be one light coat just to check for any areas we've missed with maybe the epoxy filler or a seam line we've missed, don't go full um, full hog with the uh, the primer to begin with. Uh, just put a nice guide coat down and that way you'll see any areas you've missed um, and any areas that might require a little bit of attention. So like I say, just gently degrease everything. And then here we are on the spray booth. So uh, Pro Scale Paints White Primer. We've got our Iwata CR3 Revolution. 18 PSI, I'm just going to put a light coat down to begin with. Have a quick look, all looks good. So we can come in and continue with our subsequent coats. Now, if you do spot any imperfections here, this way you can let your primer dry for an hour or two, sand back those imperfections, feather the edge of the primer so you get a nice smooth uh, demarcation of primer to plastic, and then reprime. Um, like I say, the guide coat of primer, again, an important step. But if you spray it on your first coat and you're happy with it, you continue with the rest. So our primer is a microfiller primer. So several light coats, just building it up slowly. Uh, and then it will require flatting back once dry uh, to remove the kind of rough texture you get from our primer. But once it's sanded, it'll be silky smooth and ready for our paint. So probably putting on here about four light coats of primer. Just make sure you're getting all those nooks and crannies all around the wheel arches, the vents, and the same with the bonnet. It's gonna take a little bit of coverage to get those 
filler points uh, covered up, but don't be tempted to hose the primer on. It doesn't work that way. It just wants nice, light, thin coats, getting all your angles and all your recesses, and just building it up nice and slow. So just pay attention to all the parts. Like I said, I did spot um, several sink marks on the spoiler. It did take a little bit of work to get uh, rid of. So a little bit of a nightmare, and it's a fiddly one to glue those pieces in place as well. So it can be a bit frustrating, so take your time there, and just be careful in what you're doing. Like I say, just a light coat of primer for each coat. Let it flash off for 10, 5, 10 minutes, uh, and then put another coat down. Like I say, probably four coats of primer in total. Just nice, thin coats of primer building it up. Looks like a lot of paint's going down. Most of it's missing the model. Uh, it's spraying through the windows or the bonnet. And I'm just looking for any seam lines that may have reappeared. And no, nope, we've done a really good job prepping this. Body's looking really good. I think the paint finish on this at the end speaks volumes for the prep uh, and the paint quality as well. I'm not going to lie there. Pro Scale Paint's doing their thing as usual. So. Standing back, we've got a Tamiya 3000 grit sponge now, and all we're going to do is lightly take back the very top surface of the primer. So as it's a microfiller, we're going to remove the very top surface of it, and that will infill any slight imperfections in the body, uh, and also give us a beautiful, silky smooth, keyed surface for our paint, which is next. So you don't need to go mad. We don't want to be burning through. Be careful of any edges or raised areas, uh, but we do want to take it back till it feels silky smooth like i say it will dry with a texture out the airbrush so we want to remove that by gently sanding the very top surface of the primer away but looking good it's a nice clean body on this kit it's actually a decent kit from ravel um this border motion one especially difficult to get cost me quite a bit of money but yeah um it will always pay what we want for what we're after won't we at the end of the day if you think it's worth it you're going to pay for it. If you don't, you're not. Now, original color choice for this was the General Motors Rally Green. This was the color I had my heart set on from the moment I built this kit. And then when I sprayed it, lovely color. I just don't think it suits this car. And I was just like, hmm. Yep, not happy with that color. I'm very fussy on my colors. And I was just like, yeah. Don't know about that one. So, out came the Mr. Hobby Level and Thinner. Uh, loaded the airbrush up with it, sprayed it all over the model, and then with an old toothbrush, we're going to go around and agitate all the paint and primer until we get it back to bare plastic. Now, be very careful doing this. Um, some people have reported Mr. Level and Thinner melting plastic. I've never had a problem. It's gentle on plastic, no issues whatsoever. Um, it's just a case to go around. Now, at the minute, Mr. Level and Thinner is in short supply, so I was trying to be as frugal as possible with this. Uh, but it is the quickest, easiest way of taking lacquer paints off. A lot of people say I use uh, IPA or brake fluid. Brake fluid takes a couple of days. It doesn't always get every bit off. It's very messy. Uh, I mean, this is messy, but it's done in like, I mean, this was sped up footage. It was, I think this is about 10 minutes of footage sped up. Uh, it's super quick and we can literally reprime it a few minutes after we're done here. But an old brush, old toothbrush, Airbrush loaded with Mr. Hobby Lacquer Thinner. Make sure you get your booth on and your respirator. Like I said, doesn't damage the plastic. Not from my experience. Uh, didn't even affect the filler that was on there. And we get back to brand new plastic, completely bare plastic, in just a few minutes. So while it's a bit of a pain, the Mr. Hobby Level and Thinner being in short supply, this is by far the quickest way of doing this. And it's a case of just working our way around until we're happy with every little area. And what I would recommend doing then is once you've cleaned it all up, I would spray over with some IPA-based uh, or alcohol-based um, cleaner like UMP airbrush cleaner or isopropyl alcohol just to um, neutralize any of the Mr. Hobby level and thinner. Now, we've keyed the surface back up again. We've primed it back in ProScale White Primer again. And this time, we've gone with ProScale uh, GM Daytona Yellow. I think it was Daytona Yellow. I'm forgetting now. I think it was Daytona Yellow, yes. Yes, it was. I'm looking at it on the rack. Uh, we're a little bit behind on this build. This was about a month ago. Uh, I've had that much video footage to edit that I'm a little bit behind. So bear with me, I'm a bit rusty on some details. Um, but yeah, I think this color suits his car so much better. 
especially with the paint scheme with the stripes I had in mind. And yeah, with the I want to see our three again. Um 18 psi I've sped this footage up a little bit we can put probably seven eight light coats of yellow down and remember nice light coats no need for wet coats not beneficial whatsoever you just want nice light thin coats building it up concentrate and getting coverage slowly coat by coat rather than hosing the paint on we want the color to build up nice and slow now like i say we've done all our prep before we've stripped it and done all our prep again exactly the same so we know we've got the best surface to paint on. Like I say, a little bit of a detour, probably about a day's detour, or hold up rather, from changing paint colour by the time it stripped it, primed it, let the primer dry. Yeah, it was about a day later, but not the end of the world. I'd rather be happy with the colour than settle for one I wasn't completely happy with. And I'm glad I did change the colour because the yellow looks absolutely fantastic. So we're about halfway through. Now with our coats of paint, probably four, maybe five coats of paint down now. And as you can see, it's starting to build up beautiful, really nice, rich yellow colour. Really, really going down nice. Lays down fine. Great thing about our Pro Scale painters, they're not over thin like a lot of others. Um, so you'll use virtually no paint whatsoever. I think I put eight coats of paint on this, the bonnet, uh, the mirrors. Uh, and use less than a fifth of that bottle of that paint. So for four pound a bottle, that's quite frugal to paint a full size, 24 scale, large American car for less than a pound. That's not bad going at all. So you'll get multiple cars out of our bottles of paint. And here we are, after about seven or eight coats of paint, the cover getting full coverage now, looking absolutely fantastic. Excuse my camera going out of focus. I forgot to adjust my focal point. Yeah, we love the colour. So glad to change the colour. I just think the yellow shows the lines of the car better. You see those swage lines from the front uh, fender wheel arch? Much more visible with the yellow. And uh, yeah, I am so glad. And like I say, once I get this masked up, you'll see what I had in mind all along. And you'll see why I wanted the colour change. So there we go. So a little bit more paint needed. Like I say, we've used barely any paint. That's all you can see that bottle there. Look, it's about five mil below the red ring used less less than a fifth of that bottle of paint probably even less than that hardly anything you use whatsoever to paint a car i've used some manufacturers bottles of paint where i've used over one bottle to paint a car before because it's that thin the coverage is really hard to get and that's one thing we always strive for at pro scale was to not go for profit and to go for a quality paint and that's what we've done here so again every coat of paint everything else is painted at the same time so we get even coverage uh so we've got the bonnet and the wing mirrors a spoiler is going to be black as is the rear valance so now we've got some pro the, probably the trickiest masking i've ever done on a car so i had plans to kind of replicate the kit um stripes um coming sideways down the back of the car but I wanted to mask it, and this was especially tricky to do. I reckon this took me about three hours in total to mask. Um, so, yeah, I've not got it all on camera. Well, it did, but it's especially boring, so I'm not going to show it all. But we're starting off by putting a centerpiece in uh, that we're going to measure and get the uh, central point of it. So we've got our gauge here, and we're just measuring to the window point on each side and moving the tape. And if I remember right... I think I pretty much got this by eye, spot on, first time around. Let's have a look. I think I got it near enough perfect by eye. There you go. Uh, and then we'll follow that line down the back onto the trunk or boot lid until we're quite happy we've got it. And then we'll use this as a point for our thinner tapes as well. So this is the edge we're going to put our thin tapes on to get our stripe on the edge. So... This is just a temporary piece. I'm just using this as a measurement. The hood, the bonnet, a little bit tricky to do because of the shape of that intake. Uh, did take quite a bit of work, but nowhere near as tricky as the back end of that car, which was a nightmare. So as you can see here, I've got some A0, I think this is one mil tape, and I'm offering up against the first piece of tape we put in place, because I'm using this as our marker to keep our edge straight. So we'll pop that piece on, and then we're going to pop another piece next to that. And then we'll end up removing one of the pieces 
and that will leave our pinstripe in place. It's hard to explain, um, but you'll see what I'm doing when I've got it all masked up and painted. So as you can see, we've removed the center strip now, which has left the first edge of paint in place, and then we put a, another strip next to the first one mil piece of tape, then another one next to it, and then remove the middle one. I told you it was confusing. Uh, and that leaves our pinstripe and our central strip. Now, we need to do this on the back end, but then we also need to go 90 degrees down the side of the body. And this was the real tricky bit. This took me forever to do. I did this on a live stream one Sunday morning, I think it was, and it took me hours to do. Uh, very frustrating, but here we go. I've just skipped to the end. So you can see now, once this is painted black, you'll see what I've done. We've literally come down the back there you go, now you can see it, with a 90 degree pinstripe, and I was very happy how this turned out, we have very little paint bleed through, which shows the quality of the Azu tape for a start, because it is very, very high quality tape, and then we've got some Pro Scale paints deep black, and we're going to put down several light coats of this, just building it up slowly. So we're going all over the boot lid, all over that rear volant, which is a separate part, all over the roof, all over the front end of the car here, and over the bonnet as well. So we just need to do a nice equal coat. It's not as important with black because black covers as black does. Um, but we just want to put down nice light thin coats. Doesn't need to be heavy at all. Until we're happy we've got nice even coverage all over. I love our Pro Scale Paints Deep Black. It is the deepest black you will find. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, once it's clear coated, it looks absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, I'm so happy that number one, I changed the color list to yellow and spent the time masking it as I did because I think this turned out really well. And then the nerve wracking part, unmasking. So, A, number one, make sure you detack any tape before you put it on the body and pull it away from itself. Don't pull it up. Pull it away so you're not putting any stress on the body itself. But very nerve wracking this. Uh, I thought I was going to bleed through galore everywhere. Um, I had very little bleed through anywhere. Like I say, very nerve wracking. But there we go. After we're done, very happy how that's turned out. There are a few little bits which you will just feather the edge of very lightly with a 3000 grit Tamiya sponge. And that will remove any slight bleed through. But look at that. I think it looks pretty cool. Very happy with it. We then spent a further hour or so masking up all the trim around the windows and the wheel arches. So it was a very fun um, couple of days of masking. Hours upon hours of masking. Um, so this was painted up with Pro Scale uh, Stainless Steel. Which is my go-to colours now for the, uh, the window surrounds and the wheel arches and that. And this is where this starts to come alive a little bit. And there we go, look at that. We've got all the trim, chrome all on the wheel arches, get my white balance back, the bottom piece of trim. All around the windows, the window wipers, looking good. Just one thing missing now, and that's a lower stripe. Now, somebody did give me <laughs> a bit of abuse on the live stream about this, because apparently muscle cars, this is coming from an expert apparently, uh, either have stripes on the top or the side, but not both together, which funnily enough, the ball with motion has both, but when I pointed that out, I was told ball with motion suck. So, yes, obviously, there's no right answer to give this guy. He was obviously just a bit of a troll. So, yeah, he ended up losing access to uh, the comments on face, uh, YouTube. So, yeah, uh, loads of pictures online of muscle cars with stripes on the roof. Whether it's a personal preference is a different thing. But, hey, here we go. So, these are, are you ready for this? These are Ford Mustang side stripes that I've cut a little bit shorter and these are going in place on the side and yeah Like I say, this is my take on this car and whether it should have top and side stripes. Well, I don't really care <laughs> Because this is how mine's gonna look and there we go Just needed something on the bottom of it to break up the uh, the yellow a little bit and I'm happy how that turned out Now panel line wash we've got a dark gray mix of gray and black panel line wash from Tamiya uh, It's an enamel based wash uh, just make sure your decals are fully dried and set in place. Uh, they've been set in place with UMP decal solution. But it's an enamel based wash over lacquer paint, so it doesn't react with it at all. Uh, we just let this capillary reaction down all the panel lines, leave a half an hour, 
wipe it off with some cotton buds and kitchen paper with the Santador uh, odorless mineral spinach from Windsor Newton. Um, and it just adds a little bit of depth to the body. And just again, it takes away from that toy like look of the car. And then we'll do all around the uh, windows and all around the heater intakes as well. Don't forget, we are going to take this off. So if you put too much on, don't worry. Once it's dry, we run over it with a bit of tissue. It'll come off, no problem at all. Now, if you have any doubt at all here, put a barrier coat of, say, LP9 or GX112 clear coat down. But I don't have any problems putting enamel-based wash over our paints. Um, they don't stick. And you see they're coming off nice and easy there. Just don't go mad with the kitchen paper because it is abrasive. And while the paint is well adhered to the body, uh, it will literally sandpaper the paint off if you're not careful. And uh, this is a point we need to be careful now. Whenever you think you've removed all the wash, put them all down for 10 minutes and come back and I'll almost guarantee you'll spot some where you've missed. Um, I do it all the time. So just take your time and there we go. Look at that. Even just a simple step of adding the wash adds a massive amount of depth to the model. Um, it really does. So yeah, looking good. Very happy eyes is turning out. So that's us done for part one today. Really, we're just going to continue cleaning this wash off. Uh, and then we'll let it sit for a day or two. We'll let our paint cure, which it already has. More so to let the decal set. And then we're going to come back in part two and get our clear coat on and bring this paint alive. And continue on with the build. So thanks for watching today. As always, there's links in the description down below to anything and everything I use in these videos. All the products are linked. All the social medias there. There's also a link to my Patreon. We can get three month early access on all these videos as well as exclusive content. Uh, Facebook Messenger chat group uh, and various other uh, perks as well. They're linked down below. And as always, thanks to my current patrons whose names are going to flash up on the end. So take care, everyone. Bye-bye.